I'd like to bring this meeting to order at 7 p.m. on August. I forget the date. <laughs> it's the 20th. 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 <laughs> uh, and I'm glad that all of you came. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. All right, I'll give a roll call vote. Phil Preston? Here. Danny Golden? Here. Jeanette Stewart here. Uh, we got the minutes of August 6th and of August 15th. I move we adopt the minutes for, or approve the minutes of August 16th. Wait a minute, August 6th. 6th, six, six, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll second the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Now the minutes of August 15th. And the only thing that I found under business um, under Chairman Stewart made a motion to ratify the amount of one million fifty one thousand. It should say seconded by Phil Preston and that is an in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other standing? I don't see any. I, I, make a I didn't see anything. Except that uh, as an corrected. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, I'll second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And Paul, town administrator, you have the name? Yes, we do. Yep. One for each of us. The new ones that are here tonight, we used to be able to go in the office anytime and just sign the manifest, like the payrolls, um, any purchase orders, accounts payable. But then uh, the law cha they changed that with a law saying that to sign these, we have to sign them at a public meeting. So that's what we're doing right now. We're signing the manifest. But there's nothing say nothing in the law that says that we can't go in to the town office during the week before a town meeting or something and read them and go over them. That's why, if you're wondering why I was, I'm signing in in a hurry, I read them before. Thank you, Dan. Carol, are there two chairs up back there? Are there two chairs up back there? Yes. to me that the first Monday of the month is not good for him, so he'd like to give a report on the third Monday of every month. So it's come up here. I think he has three. I know Katie is Spanish. And they didn't mention the at church when we had the coffee hour. <laughs> Yeah, I 
thought I did. And did you sign this one? The payable? I think you gave it to me after. Five accounts payable, Phil. How many have signed that? Everyone. Just check. you know that's here tonight the more people we have here the more people that speak up the more we know what problems you have and how we can handle um, as selectmen uh, the problems in the town with the town administrator and with the selectmen so I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight okay old business opening of steel bids for the fire station roof Madam Chairman we have four out of the six bids, and Linda Perry, who is our structural engineer, if you may remember, came and gave I us do. a presentation. I do. She did a good job. She's here this evening. And when we undo the bids, she's going to explain uh, something to us, because, correct me if I'm wrong, Linda, but there are two options in there. Um, when the contractors did a mandatory walkthrough and then talked to Linda, and I think also with the fire chief, um, Options were taking the decking off and not taking it. I'm going right down to the to decking, taking the decking off. So when you undo that, that's why I want Linda to explain to us before we go and turn around and say we're going to accept the lowest bid. She needs to make sure it's apples for apples. Okay. So. Would you like to have a chair up here, Linda, or are you all set? I'm all set for now. Okay. <laughs> Danny, I'll open the first one and then I'll let you open the others, okay? Is that okay? No, oh, you can open them all. No, 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 I'll let you open. <laughs> may, may I please say one other thing? You me? most certainly may. Um, it, it isn't prudent to make a decision tonight because Linda's got to look at them as there will be alternatives in there. Um, and that's why she also came this evening to explain to us and give her, uh, her opinion and then take them away to review them. So two did not submit? Uh, well, one, of, one of them that did the mandatory walkthrough then declined and one gentleman was too busy now. So two did not submit. Okay, this bit is from... Uh Skyline roofing, and the base bid is three hundred and sixteen thousand. The lump sum bid price is two thousand. Asbestos removal is fifteen thousand six hundred, and the roofing system warranty is five thousand seven hundred. So where in heck they got the three hundred sixteen thousand? I don't know. The, the, those were the alternates, add alternates. Okay. Those, those items would have been add or deduct items. Okay, because they're not in the others. That's the only thing they gave us. Excuse me, may I ask a question for a minute? Yeah. So their bid is 316. Somebody's already called about the bids. Okay. Correct. So their bid would be 316. Yes. Okay. And then Thank the alternates there. Do I, do I write down those alternates and when they call tomorrow, including, I mean, add You should be able to do that. 
Patsy, I'll give you this. Okay. And, yeah, so and then you can, can use that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Danny. It's on the last page, but it should be here with the bid. Okay. Oh, New Hampshire. Right. Oh, okay. See, this is a bowl right here. It's key up here. Yep. Bowl, it's a division. All right. This must be the headquarters. Boy, this is good. This says Melanson Company, and the base bid is 265000 Sampling and testis, testing for asbestos is 1200 uh, Alternate asbestos removal is 23200 And to provide manufacturers 25-year roofing system warranty is 3000 You guys want to look at that? <laughs> so, Paul, you only gave us three? No, I gave you four. Fine, that's kind of different. Yeah, he's got one. But I had opened it, right? No. Uh, yeah, I've opened two, so this is the third one. That's the fourth one. Okay. Yeah. You want to read nothing in it. So Santa Maria? Santa Maria? Yeah, Can would you, you take, take that it out? out? What? That's out of that. Well, <laughs> oh, look at the difference in price. Santa Maria. Okay, this is Joseph Santa Maria. And the base bid is 90000 Sampling and testing for asbestos is one thousand. Asbestos removal is thirty thousand. And to provide manufacturers twenty-five year roofing system warranty is a thousand. And Linda, you're going to look these all over, right? I to make sure I that given the everything is included. Here, here, right, you know, right. Very close apples to, to apples. Yes. Okay. They look at the same building. <laughs> they just got different figures in mind. Okay, this must be. Doesn't say it on here, but this must be A. W. Terry and Company Inc. The base bid is one hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. The sample testing for asbestos is nothing. The asbestos removal is nothing. Provide manufacturers 25 year roofing system warranty is $9,050. So Linda Perry is an expert at that. She's, she came to a meeting with us and she really knows what's going on and what she's talking about. And what Phil was saying a minute ago and Danny is there's such a big difference in the pricing. So Linda is going to check everything over for us to make sure it's apples and apples before we decide, you know, who we want to do the work. So. That's amazing. And, uh, you may want to hear from Steve. 
Steve, just a second, okay? This is what you just read. Yes. And this is from. Uh, That's from A.W. Terry and Company. Where's Santa? Where's Joe Santa Maria? That might be it. Can you keep the envelopes? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, he's, uh, for you people that don't know, he's our fire chief. Steve, do you have anything you would like to say? No, I just Something's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, has been a long, this has been a very long process, and I think they started last October looking at how we were going to patch a few weeks. It seems started. like forever, and we really need to get the roof fixed. This is bothering no, me. No, we we're doing it right, I believe, and I just want to thank the people that have been down there and looked at it and have been involved in the process. It, it does take time, and I know some people may feel we're not And Steve, you know Linda Perry, right? Oh, yeah. So she's yeah. going to be checking everything over for us. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's apples to apples. Make sure everything is included. Make sure everything is on the same, you know, plane structure. Chairman, can I ask you a question? Yep. Linda, because Ther uh, Theron did a roof sample, did a core cut, mm -hmm. and I don't believe uh, Joe Santa Maria did, um, is that why you think that they're in the, more in the realm of that the 160, 170 thousand that we were we were thinking of, rather than 265 and 316. No, I mean they were both there. We did another tour sample when they were all there. Oh, you did, yeah. right. Yes, so they were all there. But it is a huge wide margin, isn't it? Yes. So we'll have to. Well, mine is like about 150 thousand dollars, doesn't yeah. it? So that's yeah. a lot of money. Did you expect that kind of? Thing? No, I wouldn't have expected everything from. 90 to 300. I might have expected 150 to 200 to 25 maybe in that range. Um, the other thing I would like to point out, Paul, is that I don't didn't hear anybody indicate there was the secondary bid for the alternate, and that could be because I scared them off of it. <laughs> right. Because they they seem to all think it was easy to remove that concrete. And it was not going to be easy to remove that concrete this from is that taking deck. off the existing steel. Yes, deck. you know, I said you would have to have demonstrated that you knew that you've done it before, because it's uh, softy, clay, hasty, stuck to the deck. We don't want to leave it behind because it's got moisture in it, and if we put another rubberized roof and trap moisture between the metal and the rubber, right. you've got the same problem it it you've had, and we haven't fixed anything. Right. So. Um, I indicated they would have to demonstrate this and that, and we would have to be out there to watch every time. I mean, we would be watching the whole time they were doing it, so they had to provide a schedule. So I'm suspecting if you didn't get any bids to that extent, then I scared them off. Good. So. <laughs> so the, the asbestos removal and things like that are pretty much the same. And honestly, the board, that's that? a little surprising. Yeah. That's as varied as it is because yeah. the um, number one, I just had, I just got the bill for doing the testing of the samples that we took that day. It was thirty dollars. It's not a huge. Sample, right? It's not a huge cost. We took, <laughs> we took two samples: the concrete and the and the built-up roofing. Okay. Fifteen dollars per sample. Wow. Might I also say, when you first did your analysis, the very first time you came to the fire station, you didn't believe that the trusses needed support. Is that, is that correct? I mean, you. If we remove all that dead load, yeah, we're yeah. going to. That was our objective. The alternative, right. for instance, if we were to leave all this and we were to just, you know, um, put another rubber roof on top of all that, which number one wouldn't even be legal. You can't have three roofs on the right. same building. Yes. Yeah. So we wouldn't even be able to do that. Hypothetically, yeah. if we were to try to do that, we would have to spend almost as much money strengthening all those trusses to take all the extra dead load that's up there. Um, the one thing that we got to see, and now uh, Phil, you were up there as well, the, the, um, there was water sitting on that roof yeah, that day, yeah. so they couldn't even do the additional pouring I would have liked them to be able to do, but there was literally water just sitting up on that roof. So. 
I just want to make it known that Darren is the one that did the roof down there on the uh, garage down where we were at. And uh, he removed everything. Took it right down to the, uh, what do you call it, decking or whatever, and then rebuilt from there up. Darren, you're talking about one of our bidders tonight. That's the one that, yeah, that's Thank part you. of your bid. Thank you, Linda. So, I, I, I will take the originals. I will scan them to and give information. I will, to I will scan them to Linda first right. thing in the morning, and we will both communicate. And, yeah. and we'll when would you be getting back to us, Linda? Um, I'll have to talk to you about you know what makes sense in terms of buying okay. because all I've got is the base bid. I'm probably going to have to talk with the individuals to make sure they understood what they were you know compare, make yeah. sure that they understood that they they had to meet. The specifications that okay we our next meeting that we have is signing of the manifest next wednesday at 8 30 in the morning if you'd like to come to that this coming wednesday or the following the following one. oh yes we can definitely and have then it we right can now. maybe close it by then because mm -hmm. it's been going on for a while and the roof isn't getting any better and it really is really something that needs to be done yes before is winter that, is that enough time to go over this yes i mean with that disparity i would think it's going to be no i think it won't be a problem well, we waited this long, so we might as well do it and do it right rather than 10 years down the line do it all over again. Mm -hmm. I would rather see it done completely right mm -hmm. than have to band-aid it and do it 10 years down the road. We'll save, well, the, save is, the town some money in the future. The thing that people are along, that I, a lot of people don't understand is that the metal decking is not just a base for your roof. It's a structural element that keeps your walls together. It does more than just keep the rain out. It's uh, it stiffens the, the the floor walls and and makes this whole thing function as a building, um, so that you can't just bang away at it and start not, you know loosening your fasteners and and um, it's important and obviously we're trying to extend the life of this building another 25 years plus. You're telling me that. You Corrugated roofing holds the walls together? It does. It acts I, I as a stiffener. Well, just like your floor or your but roof of your house. Your walls aren't stable. It. No, but, but it still has the stiffness. Your trusses deal with the vertical, but your lateral stiffness to your walls is, is you're relying on your decking and the fastening of that decking. So it's, a, it's an incredibly important, and it's a very thin corrugated metal. You start yeah. banging away on that, and you start denting it. And it's, a, it's a very important element, even though it might seem inconsequential. Well, Linda, you seem to think that next Wednesday will be okay with you. Yes. And you'll have time to go over everything. Mm -hmm. If anything happens that you can't, please get hold of Paul. I will do that. Just so we'll know. I will. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'll, one more question. Mm -hmm. How do you... How do you factor in the competency of these contractors? We will look at, I mean, it was in the in the, the bid documents that they needed to have certain level of experience. So one of the things that we will do is go back and verify that they have that level of experience and that they have those projects behind them that, okay. uh, and that the manufacturer, a manufacturer warranty only comes from a manufacturer who is comfortable with that particular contractor. They will not just warranty anybody. That's basically an insurance policy. Um, yes, but they, you know, they need to come out and they will come out and they will inspect. And so it's very hard for somebody to have a relationship with one of the, the higher end roof companies that doesn't know what they're doing. So yeah. we'll be able to find that out. Good luck. Thanks. Because even though they're a contractor, Linda, doesn't mean that they're a roofing specialist. Is that correct. correct? Okay. And I believe all of them, um, I don't know the, 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 the uh, Joseph that well, but I can all I can tell you is I believe he had roofing written right on his yeah, t-shirt when he showed up that day. So they were all roofing contractors as far as I know. So okay? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to put on the funding of the police department radios and Paul, I think you have something. Public works. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, public sorry. works department. Two pieces of good news. For, for the board to, uh, um, which I did send you an email today. Yes, um, you did. Patch yeah. Roll checked on the licenses. Uh, as far as the municipality is concerned, we are compliant uh, with, with, FCC? With, with the FCC for the narrowband licenses. 
What, of course, we are not compliant with is the hardware, is, is, is the radios. Um, in speaking with, uh, with Tim Paquette, um, he can reduce his number of mobile and uh, portables. Uh, mobiles from nine to seven portables, he only needs two and one base station. So the 18,745 for the digital equipment would come down to 12,479. However, we have yet to get a quote for analog because the digital doesn't have to come in until 2015 and we could operate on an analog system for the next 18 months to two years if the price was much more acceptable Paul. to our budget. I'm oh, sorry, can I, can I say something? Yeah. Um, those are the radios that we spec out are analog radios. They're analog. With, with, they're analog radios with digital capability. Ah, okay, good. So, right. So, that, so I'm, I shouldn't go back now to ask for an analog. That was an analog. No, it's an analog because it, yeah, it's on the spec. It says analog radio. Okay. I did ask Craig from Osby Mountain about that, and he said they're analog with digital capability. And that's the same. Does that mean you have to? Buy something else to make them No, we can we can still communicate with fire and police with those radios. So There's a way that it would explain to me. Well, that means it can do both. Yes. Without any other. No. Um, Reprogram or anything like that. No. <laughs> when the um, that board had talked about this, um, there was a consensus of the board that it was not a good idea to have one department loan money to another department. So then Paul, the town administrator, checked into it, and according to the government affairs attorney at New Hampshire Municipal Association, it is not legal for one department to lend money to another department. Is that correct, Bill? That is correct, yes. Was that tax dollars to tax dollars, or was it uh, rate dollars to tax dollars and rental, or loaning? Oh, I it, 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 I don't does, it doesn't matter. It, it's not a legal practice. One department cannot lend to another department, whether it be a rate payer to a taxpayer or vice versa. And according to this attorney, Lee, it should not have been done five or six years ago when money was lent to the highway department to do the roof. According to them, that was not legal. Correct, Paul? Right. Lee? Are you saying now that most likely you're not going to go with the radios at this point? Um, I would say yes. I don't know how the other yeah, two feel. Going with the so. radios means what? In other words, he's saying we're not going to allow the electric department to lend the public works department the money for the radios. I believe. Is that correct? correct? Danny? Yeah. It's no, what I'm it. asking are, are you saying you're not going to upgrade the radios at this point in time? I... No, we're not saying that. No, which are you not... We're not saying that. We're supposed to be narrow band by January 1, 2013. Yeah, that's correct. We, we are. We, we are licensed. Are you... What I'm asking is, are you going to go ahead and bring it in compliance so January 1, or are you going to let it ride for now? Pat Crowell checked into this, and we do not have to have it in compliance with January 1. We already are narrow band, is that correct? We're narrow band. You're narrow band for your license only, not your radio. That's but correct. Pat checked into it with the FCC, and we're all set. I talked to Craig today, right after Pat. So yes. what we can do is we can work on it at the budget. We can have a contract signed with the radio company. And then, whether it's a regular budget or a default budget, that money for the radios will be in there. If you worry, uh, if you're worrying about the uh, grant, mm -hmm. which I think this is all about, and if you're worrying about the grant, you can apply for the grant, and it's up to the the, the, the board to approve the grant. We would approve it without. Uh, highway department radios being in there. So if you want to write the grant, the, the selectman can approve the grant, and I mean approve it, you've got to get it, and uh, approve of you writing the grant. Okay. So you're willing to, uh, you're willing to sign the grant, and you're also willing to have a public hearing on behalf of the utility so we can get that grant money? We are saying that we would be willing, but we have to look into everything and make sure everything is all set before we make that decision. 
correct? Correct. What do you mean by all set? The, the we have to meet the paperwork, there. which you can't say it's okay if we don't meet the paperwork. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying, if I get a hold of uh, Homeland Security and they put home and we fill out the grant, money, the, the grant, you're willing to sign it and then have a public hearing on that so we can go ahead with the radios. Yes, everything is filled out correctly. Yes, Lee, we are willing to do that. Is the that correct? Yes, the paperwork is filled out correctly. Yes, we are. Thank you. Is that what you needed for an answer, Lee? Lee, is that what you need? Yeah. Okay. Is that a vote? Did all three of you agree? Or it's, 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 it's a consensus. It doesn't, doesn't have, have to be a vote. vote. It can be that you yes. all signed the grant? That's what I'm asking. You. Yes, it's a consensus of the board that as long yeah. as the paperwork is all filled out. Minutes, if it's appropriate. Yeah. As long as the paperwork is filled out correctly. Okay, it Kendall? It takes a quorum to sign a grant. It takes a quorum to sign a grant. Right. They said yes. That's a two okay. out of three. Okay. If signs it, that's fine. It's legal. It doesn't have to be you, 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 and you to sign it. Oh, well, I'm going to sign it. Phil's going to sign it. I don't know about you, Matt. I said yes. So, for your information, they'll be signed by all three. As long as the paperwork is correct. As long as it's straight, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the reason that the select board feels that way, Lee, is that, that saves the town money. Even though it's not a taxpayer, it's a ratepayer. So with you getting that grant, that saves all the ratepayers' money. Absolutely. That's all I was asking. So that's, you know, that's the reason that the selectman would be willing to sign it. But what I, why I said that about the paperwork, grants are, how do I say this, grant um, paperwork is not easy. It has to be filled out correctly. Everything has to, any blank space has to be filled out. Uh, so that's the reason that I'm saying is we'll accept it providing that the paperwork is all set. Okay. okay? Do you, you understand that? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, letter to the Premier of Quebec regarding Northern Pass. Yeah, I've changed the date to August the 20th, but <laughs> there was a... There was a what am I? Well, there was a, uh, a dispute whether we were going to do it. The, it was 285 people voted no for Northern Pass, but 114 people in Ashton think Northern Pass is a good idea. That's the other way. No, it was, 28, it was 285 said we don't want it in town. I thought no, Northern I Pass passed. It did. It, yeah, it did. It did. It didn't want it. The opposition yeah. vote passed. Yeah. Um, but 114 people think Northern Pass is, is a good idea. Now, I don't... I. We were going to discuss whether we wanted to put that warrant in with the letter. It, I, I thought at first it was 285 to 95. It would have yeah, been clear. Paul, yeah. repeat this to me uh -huh. again. You said the warrant article passed. The warrant article passed. But then you're saying 285, 285 voted no and 114 voted yes no, and it no, didn't pass. 285 voted in, in favor of not having Northern Pass come through Ashland, but 114 people felt Northern Pass was a good idea. He, he the opposition would be saying that it was not. It was not the well. It was an old one. It's two to one. That's pretty. That's pretty. Well, that isn't bad, though. I mean, but, but it was, well, we thought it was maybe yeah. ten to we, one. That's well. right. When we originally did well, it, but I still think it should be in there. My, opinion, my opinion is, why do you want to put the numbers in there? Quebec or whoever's in Quebec, uh, the premier of Quebec, could give diddly about the numbers. He just wants to know if Ashland was in favor or against. And well, I, I say we don't need the numbers in there. The only reason I think we should have the numbers in there because it wasn't close. It wasn't like 10 votes or 20 votes. That's the so only what? Well, I think that's important. I think if it shows that it was close, then that doesn't mean that the town of Ashland is against Northern Pass. But I think if we send it saying, yes, the town of Ashland is against Northern Pass, and it isn't a close vote, I think it's important that yeah, we send well, don't, it. Back. Don't you well, think the Premier of uh, Quebec would call down or have it, one of his assistants find out what the vote was in Ashland? It's well, if they're not going to look at the letter, that damn well is not going to call. It's public information. One factor is that the turnout was very low. Yes, it was. And Vote the turnout. You know, but when you add those numbers, well, I don't care about the turnout. It's, it's the, the results of the vote, and I think that's what the premier of Quebec wants: the results yes. of the vote. Yeah, yay and nay. And 
they were against it, and I think that's all they need. Oh, I and think with a polite letter that Paul writes, he can say that, rather than put the numbers in there. I, I really don't think... I'm, I thought it was a good lecture. Let's, let's settle this. Well, it, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for against putting the numbers in there. Whatever you two go along with, I'm not going along with. <laughs> 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 well, I say send it, and I think Dan will agree. So, can I look at it? That's the same letter you had before. Yeah, just yeah, I've changed the date twice now, so I want to. You know, I I, I go both I I go back and forth on that. I do too, and I'm not sure it really matters, but the letter. I do too, but if Danny doesn't want. It, well, well, it's not in there. It's up to you guys. No, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't just, matter just, to me. Just so you know, saying, you know, this letter yeah. does not include the vote. <laughs> yeah. 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 Put it in. <laughs> I say we sign it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't be so hasty. I'm going to move that we sign this. Yeah, that's fine. We don't have to hold on it. We just sign it. I'll do it. Done. 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 Thank you very much. Ashland Police Department contracts. Tony. I guess I put three different versions that we came across as far as uh, contracts. One was one that uh, I found in the files that the police department had on an individual here. There is one there from uh, what Campton and Plymouth now uses, and there is one there from the town of Moultonboro. Um, you'll see Moultonboro's is quite lengthy. Um, I think to keep it the simpler the better. What, what one did the Moultonboro the one that's blacked out? Right, Moultonboro has the blackouts on it. Which one is the Ashland is the same one in Plymouth does? Um, Ashland's, Ashland's, Ashland's is the first one. Yeah. It's it's if you look at it, it's very similar. Okay, Ashland's the first one. The second one in Plymouth contract is by Plymouth. The second one is going to be Plymouth and Campton. That's the one that they're using. Okay. Yeah. And then the third one that you're looking at is, is a version that Moulton Borough uses. So you have used the Ashland one? I haven't. I have never put anybody under contract in the three and a half years I've been here. So in other words, this was one that was on file for Ashland. Yes. It isn't one that you took some from Plymouth No, that's just what Ashland had before. I whited out the person's name because it's confidential information. Yeah. I read these prior to, to tonight. You know, we got them in our blocks. And I kind of like the second one, the employment contract, which is Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth and Campton. They usually yeah, like that. it's shot and sweetened to the point. I agree. What, 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 it's everything in there that uh, a, a police department, I think, in my personal humble opinion, needs. Right. But uh, the, the last one is really too too much in there. There's a lot to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, when I read the Plymouth one, I thought some parts of it were a little punitive in terms of what the but the employee had to repay the town. Well, you can you can modify that any way you want. There's nothing cast in stone. I personally, I personally like the Ashton one. I thought it was thorough. I, there were some things about. I, I thought it was better than the than the Moultonboro one because it, I I was felt it was a little confusing. I you know I didn't spend hours going over these things and comparing right. them. But when I read them through, it just struck me there were some typos in the Ashton one, which. Uh, can be corrected. I, I made me to think that this was a new document, but it obviously isn't because it has October, August 205 on it. But it just seemed to be specified things out, and in this day and age, 
things need to be in black and white. And well, but even when things are in black and white, it's not always black and white. We don't know that. Well, I think I think <coughs> that seeing the chief has to deal with this. I like his opinion. Um, I like the one that Campton and Plymouth did. To be quite honest with you, I have no problem with the Ashland one either. That's pretty short. And, you know, you guys are the hiring and firing authority. And, um, it's, you know. We're not. We are about to hire somebody. Well, we're in the process. Yeah. We've had, we've had, uh, full time, right? the full time one right now. Um, we've had the, um, Oral boards with them, and they gave us a top candidate. I talked to that top candidate today. He is interested. We're checking into right now whether this top candidate needs to go to the academy full time because he has certification from another state. When would you need to have a contract? When we actually hire him. Which to, is? Well, we're going to end up. It, it's going to it's going to be a while because we got to do a polygraph, we got to do a psych test, and then we'll make him a, an offer. Of employment at that point in time, when we go to hire him, that's when we'll. I'd like to spend a little more time on that. You, we just got by, all, by all means, go ahead because it's going to it's, 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 it's going to take a minute. It's going to take a minute. Well, I know you said we're going to change things in here because Ashland has fifteen thousand payback and Plymouth has twelve. I'm not sure twelve is going to cover it. So that's. Well, really but good. yeah, depend. It depends on. Uh, Depends on if the guy's going to the full-time academy or if he has to, you know, that's something I think we need to discuss and I think we need to discuss it, me with the selectmen at a work session or something about. Tony, our yeah, next meeting is next Wednesday, a week from now at 8.30 when we do the manifest and we always put on other business, so maybe you could be there then yep. and we could talk about it. Better. That's fine. That's not just... Yeah. Uh, we don't need to discuss those, so the cows. No, no. Nope. Nope. I mean, you have time to look at it and it. figure out something and. Yeah. It's not a big brain decision. It isn't. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. That's good. So, Danny, it's okay if we do that next time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, signing of the loan agreement for the River Street project, which we had the public hearing about. That sounds fun. <laughs> what do you got here? What do we well, got Well, you both have to look at this because the, the, you've got to allow the chairman to eventually sign all four documents where I've indicated. So I'd like you just to read that for a minute. Paul, why is this amount different than the amount we had on because the Because that's hearing? the savings. That's what's going to be in the in the in the loan agreement. We're saving a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So the final document for the loan will will show nine hundred and fifty two thousand dollars. So the public hearing did not have to have the savings in there. It, it no, only it did had not. to it have the amount of the, the actual the, the, the approximate principal amount. That's okay. what we had in there. That's correct. Would you like to do the Which was for the thirty year bond starting in two thousand one. <laughs> Well, I'd like to make a motion to accept the loan agreement for the re refinancing of the loan as respects to the River Street project in the amount of 952000 for the period February 15 to 2013 to August 15, 2030, and to allow this agreement to be signed by the Chairman of the Board. I second the motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The town treasurer is coming in tonight. She'll sign it tonight and in the morning Patsy will put the seal on because they have to be back by the 24th okay. to bond council. There's four, four documents here. So, Paul, we're all set with that, with the public hearings, and this, we're all set with the bond. Yes, we are. Anything on the old business? 
I have something I'd like to bring up on the old business. David, I was wondering how the historical society is doing about picking uh, someone, choosing one of the bidders to do the roof for the jailhouse. Um, well, we found that there is more to the job than just the shingles. <laughs> that, uh, some rot in there in the roofing structure. So uh, we've been back to the two contractors and another contractor that we wanted to bid from. And we're still waiting to hear from one contractor. As soon as you know, will you let us know just so we know if it's being taken care of or if the town has to get involved again? Yeah, well, once we get the bids, we have to have a board meeting and then decide. I mean, because the board originally voted only $2,000. Right. So it's probably not going to do it. Okay. Just, um, you know, just kind of, you know, either let Paul know or, or one of us know so that we know what's going on with that. Because I hadn't heard back from anybody, so I was concerned. Yeah, we're still waiting to hear back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do, we, do we need to do anything about 35 Highland Street or is that? On track. That's on track with Bobby. That, that, that's on track with Bob. Bob is coming back this Wednesday. He, okay. He's so on the way back from the highway. So you're not going to deal with that. Right. I'm just going to make mention of it. Okay. Um, just to okay. let Glen House know, we are moving forward. Oh, we yeah. see it, Jeanette. Sorry. Oh, no. Let me tell you, when we had our meeting, I said to Paul, this needs to be taken care of. If something isn't done, then the town needs to take it over. Okay, okay. so we are. Okay. Yeah. What happened before, Ingrid, because of the way that the law read, uh, the town really couldn't do much about it. But I found an article that uh, Mr. Zarki told me in the paper about Conway, who is working on getting uh, uh, places like that cleaned up or taking them over. And uh, we can do something about it now. So. Uh, Paul is going to go forward with it, and the, the board wants to go forward with it, so I'm telling you that something will be done. Okay? Now, what about the, the library and insurance? Is that, is that that's something we need to discuss? Paul, that's something we that's new business. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we not in new business? No, no we're, we're on, on, we're on old sorry. business. No. I'm sorry. Pat, did you have anything on the old business? I do. Uh, yeah, uh, a, a while ago, did we discuss, uh, on this reference to the beach, did we discuss, uh, someone sent us a letter, or the administrator a letter, and they passed it on, about complaints of the beach. Did we do anything about that? The, the um, insurance carrier is coming on the 20, uh, sorry, the 12th of September, and we're going to have a meeting of the first work session that month talk about um, all the issues relating to the beach. All the issues? All the issues, which is the raft, the lifeguards, condition, etc. Liability. Rick is coming. Rick and Climate. the safety officer, Rick Alpers and yeah. Philip St. Cyr, who's the, yeah. who's the safety officer. Um, coming here on September the 12th. Paul, well, we have that meeting, would you make sure that Jim Black is there too? Oh, yes, yeah, he, will, he will definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the old business? Danny? No, that's it. Phil? No, uh, September 12th, you said. Yeah, what time is that? Paul? Nine o'clock, because we're going back to the original hours for the... Work session, work. is that a Wednesday then? That's a work session. Okay, good. Okay, new business. David sent a letter in um, as part of the um, Library Trustees with Alice Staples and Jim Davis um, regarding... Uh, you've, you've got it in front of you, I just put it in your... Box tonight. I didn't get it. Or is it? Did yeah. you leave it here tonight? Yeah, it's, it's part of the uh, part of the documentation I gave you. Um, when I when I first came to this position, I remember uh, starting an application for the insurance for the for the library, but was swiftly told by the Scribner trustees that they uh, insure the building themselves, and we just insure the contents. Right. Um, that still stands today, but if you read carefully into David's and Alice and, and Lynn's letter, I think this is something now that we have to look into. Um, because it is a town, it's a town owned building managed by the Scribner Trust. And I didn't see anything in the world, correct me if I'm wrong, David, I didn't see anything in the <coughs> world that relates to the insurance and who pays for what. Um, no. So, no. Well, can I see that a second? Um, sure. Is 
It says any insurance policies of town may hold. We, we hold the contents. On and that's all. Yeah. And we own the building. We own the building, that's correct. Yeah. And why aren't we insurance? Oh, that's a very good question. Good question. We have insurance the contents. We should be insured. Because, we, because, I, because we were instructed that it's already <coughs> taken care of and paid for. And it says here that they pay, for, by the, uh, they pay the building insurance. That, that is correct. But I think if you read carefully, David's point is well taken, that going forward there could be issues that can't be ironed out. I see. I see. My wisdom. Uh, legal ramifications here yeah. because of uh, one ensures the building and one ensures the contents and, and if, <coughs> let's say God bless if nothing happens but if something did happen uh, the, 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 the library could be all in the goods because who knows what it's sure to go to court. Well, it, it's, it, you're absolutely it, right. It's, yeah. it's a fine line between what happens inside that affects the inside of the building and also what affects the structure of the building. The structure of the building, so, yeah. yeah. I guess my question to David is, if the Scribner trustees are paying for it now, why, why are you concerned about that? Why do you think that the town should take over the responsibility of paying for it if the Scribner trustees are paying for it? Okay. Well, here's the scenario. You have to remember what the will says. Uh, we're taking, uh, you know, it's just a windstorm and a tree falls on the building. Yeah, the Scribner trustees could fix it. Okay. But the will says, um, the will was written in January of 1935, which was a month after the Swan Lake House fire, which burned the building on where the Cumberland Farms is now, and the current building where the American Legion is. So at that time, Emma Scribner was surrounded by these ruins, the fire buildings, burned buildings. <coughs> and she put in the phrase that if the build her, she wanted her place to be a community center, but it said if, if that building was no longer in good condition, then the property would be turned into a park. So that's what it says. If there's some catastrophe that destroys this building, a fire, a tornado, or whatever, um, then the property is going to become a park. That's what the will says. The will also says that any income for the Scribner Trust, uh, whatever that means, can only be used on this property for the building there or the park. So we're looking at a scenario. If there is a catastrophe. The property becomes a park. We have no building. We have no place to put the building. And if we haven't insured the building, we have no money. But you have got the building insured because the Scribner trustees are yeah, insured. Yeah, but they, where can they spend the money? The will says they can only spend their money on that property. They can't give us, we think, we, we may have to have a lawyer look at this, but we're looking at this and wondering, can they give us the money to build a new building somewhere else for the library? Well, if they can, then the town can, if that's the way, if that's the, way the will be. <coughs> well, the Scribners, if the Scribners pay the insurance from the Scribner Trust Fund, right. is that insurance money they get a income for the Scribner Trust? If it is, then uh, can they spend it anywhere else? And we're thinking probably not. Well, then I guess my feeling is before the selectmen decide on this, you're going to have to check with an attorney to see, you know. Well, we don't even know what the insurance policy has. Have you said. talked with the Scribner trustee? We, we asked through Paul, and he doesn't he got a response. I'm not a response. You don't get a response. Uh, um, just that it, that it would be their money and they would decide what to do with it. Okay, if, the Scribner, it. if the Scribner insures the building, why why don't they insure the contents? They don't own the contents. They don't own the building. Right? Well, they manage the building. I don't know why. Well, I don't know how this happened. I don't know how that happened. If I manage a building, uh, that doesn't mean that I pay the insurance. I just manage the building. 
Uh, I think that it's true what you say. If, if something happened in the building, what, what are they going to do with the money? And who gets it? My gut feeling is that they're going to put it in, in, in interest and draw interest on it. They're not going to. It becomes a park, and what little money they spend for cleanup and park, it was, it, it's a park. What is the, what is the building insured for? We don't. Know. Don't but know I what think the value somebody of the needs to get that information. Well, he, Paul asked for it. Well, I asked for it. Was, you asked who? I asked the Scribner trustee. <laughs> you did? Yes. And you don't know you what? Didn't, okay. no, we don't know. We wouldn't tell you. That's why we well, asked. I asked originally when I was going to fill out the application for the, uh, yeah. the insurance coverage, and then I was told it's not enough, nothing to do with that. Well, the thing is, if the will reads that way, it doesn't matter because even if we insure it. No, no. If the town insures it, the town will get the money. Mm -hmm. Right. You can spend it anywhere you want. But we can't do anything with that building. No. If that's the way the will reads. Well, yes, you could do something with the building to repair it. But if the, our concern is if there's a catastrophe that destroys the building and invokes that part of the will that says it becomes a park. Okay. Now, if the Scriveners get the money, the Scrivener trustees get the money, and they can only spend it on that property, and they decide not to replace the building as a library building, but to go to a park, which is what the lawyers said, the town attorney said, is how the will will work, uh, then they keep the money, they use it on that property, which is now a park. So, the library has no building, it has no place to put a building, and it has no money from the insurance for a building. Why would we you just get money for the contents. Why would you think it'd be different if the town insures it? Because the town would get the money. The, the town, town would get the money, but it doesn't mean we can put a building there. No, it's not like that. It's not it would would still be a park. Right, yes. but we still need a library building. <laughs> And where is the money for the library building coming from? From the town. <laughs> right. I mean, if you don't have the insurance money for the building, where are you going to get the money for a new building? Where are we going to find this money? I think the Scribner trustees, if they get the money, then they're responsible. No, they're only responsible for the Scribner property. I think they should be responsible. Well, That's what, what I'm saying. What I feel and what is... What I should have is two different things. I don't agree with the what, what, I don't think the Scribner <laughs> is going to build I a building. I think they're going to go, what the will says, is to make it a park. And maybe maybe they do the cleanup, but then I think that they would take the money, whatever insurance money they get, would put towards uh, whatever they get in interest in the And the town would be left hole in the bag. We would have to find a piece of property and money to build a town library. No question about that at all. Then where do we, we come up with the money to pay for the insurance? Uh, there's two. I, I, I usually wait to public comments, but I'll let you guys talk about this. I believe that when this was all set up, Sam Norman was a criminal trustee. He was in the insurance business. Yeah. Yeah. I would assume that he knew what, what he was doing. Uh, Elon? If the town insures the building, since it owns the building. The town, if there was a catastrophe, then the town would have money to build by land somewhere else. Which the they do not have so questionable as to what we own and what we don't own. So I think somebody well, needs to talk with the Scribner trustees. Yeah. Well, in, in reference to what Lee said, uh, God rest his soul, Sammy Norman, is the insurance business. Did the insurance through Sammy Norman? I'm sorry? Was the insurance business through Sammy Norman insurance company? I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know. No. I think it probably will. So the benefit of the doubt will, will give the benefit of the doubt to uh, Ashland Insurance Company. I would hope not because that would be a major conflict of interest. Well, <laughs> you ever hear of a major conflict of interest before? Of course you have. 
and, and it's been going on for years. But just like Eli says, I think if the town insured it, the town would get the uh, something fantastic would happen, the town would get the money, and the town could afford to uh, then some land and some uh, in a building. That's something we'd have to put in the budget for next year. So I'm just going to make a suggestion that you, you invite the um, Scribner trustee and the You're right. library trustees and yourselves to get together to iron it. I out. think we need to meet with them. Because I think right now there are a lot of questions that need, need answers that we don't have. I mean, I wouldn't feel right making a decision that the town pays for the insurance when nobody well, has I don't think the, the letter trustees. asks for you to do that right away. We're asking for information. Yeah. Right, but we don't have information that we need. Right. So I think if we meet with the trustees, then maybe that will solve some of the problems of answering the questions. So, Paul, if you can get a hold of them, maybe set up a meeting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any other new business? Are, are there ways of finding out beforehand what the billing is not answered for? <coughs> Contents. We ensure the content. Oh, we ensure the content. So I don't know what the, the property value is in the building. Right? I think it's asking for a dollar amount, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Your letter want to know. What? Well, not just dollar amount. Then you need to know what the coverage is too, because it can be a dollar amount, but it doesn't mean it covers what you want it to cover. How much the building and contents are insured for? That's to me, the contents like are separate. Yeah. So. Uh, that to me sounds like dollars. So we don't know. What we can Apparently, they don't know what the building is insured for. Right, and that's what we need to contract. find out, and we need to find out yeah, we how know, much we know what and what. Okay. Oh. Have we gotten anywhere there? So, uh, what, what we need to do, I think, is, is, and I probably David could do that, is I'd like to see a copy of the will, to read the will, to know exactly what it says. And we've seen a copy of it, but... We can do it again. Yeah. Ask tomorrow. I have it at the office. Do you, do you want me to... Are you going to take care of that? I think I got it to do it. Yeah. It's in the file. Yeah. And I'm sure there's been legal ramifications over this in the past. Of, of uh, uh, Well, my attorney said this, and they, they got a right to insurance, and my attorney said this. But really if, if, if that be the case, then let's get down to the nitty gritty and find out for sure, rather than carry this on for years and say that this and that and that and this, and make damn sure that we're on the right track. Thank you. That's sort of where we put it. We want to make yeah. sure we're covered. Paul's going to set up a meeting with them so that we can figure out what's going on, because right now we don't have a lot of, of answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, new business. Does anybody else have anything on the new business? New business. Town administrator's uh, report. We, do we deal with nothing to say about, about the cold screen? I said my report. Okay, you're coming. Yeah. You're bringing that up. Okay, you all set, Paul? Yep, you yes, set. Since my last report to the Board of Selectmen on August the 6th, the town office staff and the public works director sat through an hour-long webinar on August the 9th hosted by Business Management Systems, Inc., BMSI. This webinar was to introduce a new program called Web DPW, Software for Asset Management and Work Orders. This would eliminate paperwork and improve efficiency. The town office and the public works director will be considering this automation and its costs in the 2013 budget. Public Works Director Tim Porquette informed the Board of Selectmen that on August the 14th, the Public Works Department crew found grey water coming from a culvert pipe at Cold Springs on North Ashton Road, which was eventually traced to a catch basin in the parking lot of their pool house. The sample was taken to DES in Concord for analysis, and the report showed a high level of chlorine. The town health officer has been notified, and there may be a, as there may be a bacteria issue associated with this leakage. The town administrator wrote to the general, general manager of the Cold Springs Resort and copied the DES accordingly to see at what stage they wanted to get involved due to the close proximity of the resort to the Pemi River. Residents had complained about hazardous condition of the property at number 35 Highland Street and the selectmen are conferred with the code enforcement officer as to the latest citation and the process going forward. On August the 16th, a representative from Certified Computer Solutions met with the police and fire chiefs 
to go over computer requirements for 2013. This signals the beginning of our budget season, where the Budget Committee has asked for some positive changes to the format and information. Each department will provide the committee with a narrative to accompany their budget request. The CIP committee meeting scheduled for August 22nd has been put back to August 29th to avoid a conflict with the work session for the planning board, as two of the planning board members are on the CIP <coughs> committee. There are two heel meetings over the course of the next 10 days. One on August 22nd is for the Ashton Hill committee, uh, steering committee to meet with Marty Burkus Miller, who is a professor of health education at PSU, to discuss possible <coughs> collaborative wellness efforts. The other is uh, on August 30th for the Healed Steering and Ad Hoc Committees to meet with the folks from the Foundation of the Healthy Communities to discuss Ashland's asset inventory. The third Economic Development Meeting to discuss the <coughs> Elec uh, uh, Economic Development Summit in October is scheduled for August 27th at the fire station. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. On the select board items, I just want to bring up a couple things uh, for people that weren't there. Sandra Coleman was there at our uh, meeting on the 15th uh, when we signed the manifest. But a couple of things that were brought up, uh, we had a resident complain about uh, 35 Holland Street, which is the Como residence, uh, the building that half of it is down and half of it isn't, and I believe there's a barn there too. Uh, the board feels it's time to tear the building down as it is a safety hazard. And the town administrator is going to check with uh, the code enforcement officer, and we are going to be, be going forward with that. Also, um, the public works director, Tim Parquet, was there, and he mentioned that the road bids would be opened by Sletman at the signing of the manifest on August 29th. I believe that's Hicks Hill Road for the paving, or what's the other one, Paul? Uh, the top of Levitt Hill. Okay. Uh, Tim is going to do uh, something at the top of Levitt Hill. Okay. Correct, Tim? Yes, grinding them. Grinding them, good. Um, the reason I wanted to mention these, some of you, of course, you know, have other things to do, and I don't expect you to come to all the meetings anyway, but I, I like to mention the things that we accomplished at the meetings, because I think it's, you know, the people that come here, I think you're interested, and I think you should know what's going on. Um, the other thing is, Sandra Coleman has brought up at some of our meetings about the uh, union. Uh, what happened was we had a person named Chris Long, who I had told Sandra a while ago, uh, was going to be have a meeting with us, and then I just find yeah. out the other day that he's only temporary, so now we have another person named Neil. So Sandra, as soon as I can get that done, I will get that done. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. Okay, any other thing on this left foot item? Yep, we have the prime mix. And we have a living. Who is that? Patsy, who is this? Is this the last one? Does this include Scribner? I don't know what that is. No. Uh, the, tim even, even the Timber Tax, Stony Lonesome Town Trust. I'll double another guess. That's our annual payment. Sorry, I didn't know that. That's okay because it says Stony Lonesome Farm Trust, Caravan, Alexandria, whatever. Yeah. But if we in Maine, Connecticut, so I'm like, okay. Wait a minute. Do you not have a liability? No, we, 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 we have the contents. We have to ensure we have, we have the contents with primates. That's all we ensure. We don't ensure the property. That's Levitt Hill, Danny. Remember, I was questioning you about that? Well, do you have any other select board items when we do that? Just those two. Patsy, do you? So we do have to go into non public, right? Yes. Thank you, sir. I do have a public comment. Somebody came in to give us. Yeah, that's fine. Um, non-public is that illegal? Yeah, but it's what I, I gave you the, the I highlighted what, what it's Yes, I Okay, I'll find it. 
or maybe from the bottom. Okay, any other uh, slap or items? So? No. Okay, any? No. Okay, public comments or uh, concerns? Just, um, Eleanor um, from Food for All came in just to let us know that on September 4th, well, they'll be. Yeah, cool. They'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Food for All. Um, there's wow. not many details right now to give you other than for people to know that that's the date. Um, and for the further details will be coming. Okay. And it will be put on the website. Okay. Be given it okay. Thank you. They do a great job. That's the day after Labor Day, yes? Correct. No. Uh, no, yeah. you said the 20th. No, the yeah, so September 4th. Oh, I thought the 20th anniversary. Oh, 20th anniversary. I'm sorry, I wrote it wrong. Uh, okay. <laughs> so probably maybe the town can do something with that. Maybe some type of a certificate or a plaque or something. We can talk about that. Okay, no other separate items? Uh, public comments and concerns, Lee? I just want to clarify one thing. Assuming the grant is filled out correctly. Yeah. And you sign it. Yeah. You're willing to also have a public hearing on that? Yes, we are. Because that's, that's. That's part that of signing along. the grant. I'm just saying, I'm just asking. Oh, no, no problem. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. No problem at all. Okay. Comments? Um, I'd just like to let the public know that last night we had a bunch of, uh, I don't want to call them break-ins in the vehicles because the vehicles weren't locked. Um, I took 13 reports today. I know there's more out there. Yep. Um, it makes for a very busy day. But um, I would just like to let everybody know that you need to be vigilant about locking your vehicle. There was not a single one locked vehicles that was broken into. And like I say at the end of every meeting that I read my report, that thefts from vehicles are a crime of opportunity. And there was a big opportunity in the town of Ashland, I'm going to say this morning, um, for people to lose some stuff. Wow. So just be aware that it's going on. And we're working on trying to figure out who it is. Was there any Where does it take place? Mm -hmm. It took it place all over the town of Ashland last night, from West Street to Mill Street to Pleasant Street to Highland Street to Prospect Street. Senior citizen place. Everywhere. So it's just, it's, no, it's not during the day. It's, it's, it's at night. It's, you know, uh, you know, it's hard to uh, nail it down. But when people are leaving your vehicles unlocked, they're not breaking out the windows. I believe that insurance doesn't cover it either. So, um, so we're working on trying to figure out what's going on right now. Um, so just, I want everybody to be aware of it. Um, spread the word to your neighbors. Okay, we've got to start making it easy for them. And um, we're doing what we can at the police department to try to figure it out. So, you okay. see any vehicles outside? Anything suspicious? Yeah. You know, I say in the town of Ashland, there's nothing open after midnight. The only thing open in the town of Ashland after midnight is Burger King now. Okay? So when we see people on the street, we stop and ask them their names and have conversation with them so that we know who's out there walking around. Um, that's just how you do it. So you have an idea of who's out there moving around. Um, I did get some video surveillance from a couple of stores in town because I want to try to see who's in the street moving around at night. The video isn't that great, but it does give you an idea of the automobiles that are out there. Um, it's pretty tough to get people's faces on some of the stuff, but um, we're working on that end of it to try to figure out what's going on. But last night was a big night, or this morning, if you will. Um, for it. Okay. Thank you. I just like to uh, thank uh, Steve Heath and the fire department uh, during the outage we had on uh, Sunday. Uh, they checked on everybody that we give them as a critical who's on oxygen, etc. We have we compile that and we try to give him an updated list every time. Uh, once he contacted, if they could make contact. And he uh, would send guys out just to check on everybody. And I'm not, I don't mean just, okay. I don't know, guys and gals. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, uh, but 
you know, it, it shows that uh, we do work together and we're, we're trying to care for the people that need the assistance the most. I'm glad you said that, Lee, because, Steve, I also want you to know that Lee mentioned that at our meeting last week, too, when we had our, uh, our meeting for the manifest, and then we had other business. Lee did mention that he wanted to thank the fire department for, you know, doing all that they did on that Sunday. I'd also like to say, so I'm glad Lee brought that up, um, I had a couple phone calls at home, not for that Sunday, but just saying what a great job the fire department is doing and how... Um, they really appreciate the concern and the caring that the fire department's doing, so I just want to let you know that. Thank you. You're welcome. Ann? Uh, when you're having the, the meeting with the um, about Park and Rack and the Beach, is that open to the public, or do you want townspeople? And it has to be posted, so if you'd like to come. So I'd like to come. Yeah. yeah, it has to be posted. Any time, Ann, that uh, the selectmen have a meeting and they're going to be making a decision, it has to be posted to the public. Right, but I didn't know you were making If we have, decision. like, any legal meetings, that does not have to be posted if we're with our attorney. Right, but I didn't know you were discussing this yep. situation. Yeah. Well, public welcome. Cheryl? I just wanted to let everyone know um, the KD program, for anybody that doesn't know what it is, it's the community alcohol. Um, drug for youth. Um, they're having a fundraiser. Um, they're they're raffling off a shed. It's an eight by eight by ten shed, and they're doing. Um, it's five dollars a ticket or three for ten. And I do have tickets, so if anybody is interested, um, it's a nice little shed. It's unfinished, um, and it goes for a good cause. Shell, is that the uh, program up there in Plymouth? Yes. Kendall? For those who don't know it, I'm Kendall L. Hughes. My question is, you're on a contract with the uh, station that records the meeting. Two, two meetings a month? Yes, sir. Could one of those be diverted to the work session y'all have? Because you have it early in the morning, which people have gone to work or are out of bed yet. We can't see it. So could you have one of these meetings at the work session? So we know uh, what's going on. Actually, probably not because the contract is the first and third Monday of each month. She's all scheduled for that, so she can be there. So I would say probably not. Well, have you checked with them to see if you could? Well, I think it's better to have the meeting then. It's not really a work session. Many times it's just signing of the manifest. So. That is what I hear goes on. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. There's a lot more business going on in work sessions than we Well, let me tell you something, it. Kendall. If you hear that as a rumor and you really want to know what's going on, then you come to the next one. There isn't a room down there for everybody to get in there either. Yeah. Well, if there isn't room, then we'll move it upstairs. Uh, uh, it's not handicap accessible. Then we can move so it to the other one. Your answer is no. I didn't say no. I said probably not because the contract says the meeting's the first and third Monday of the month. Is that correct, Paul? That's correct. How long is your planned contract for? Our contract is for 12 months. We're halfway through. 12 months we can ask the question way through. Right now the contract is a contract. It's $30 an hour. Correct if I'm wrong, Judith. It's $30 an hour, isn't it? Yeah. With a very modest uh, uh, membership fee, annual membership. And do you record them? I know you usually have to take a photo going. No, okay. It doesn't matter. The tape recorder is not the same as the video. Well, I know that, but if you have it running, it then. doesn't matter. The purpose of this is so that people that cannot make a meeting or do not come to a meeting can see it on TV. Well, the I know that, but I'm yeah. saying you can't get meetings. Well, and you're saying you're doing other business, you have a tape recording. Right? That tape recorder is public knowledge. Right. All you have to do is go, I believe you can go online and get it, is that correct? Uh, or if no. Kendall can't go online no. and all he has to do is go to the town office and he can Let's buy it. The tape recorder is not all of them. Thank you. The town okay. office doesn't have the right software online. to transcribe it to the website. So they works. cannot go on the website now and get the no, no, not video? The audio, not the audio. No, not the audio. So they have to go, uh, but they can go on TV and watch it. 
Some people can. Only if you have time more. If you don't have time warner, you can't watch it. That's right. Yeah, sure. you, can, you can watch it on the internet, but you can't watch it on television on anything else, which is what the money's being paid for it to do. Yeah. Well, what do you, the what would you like us to do? Oops. Take two and hit the left or what? <laughs> no? <laughs> Yeah. I have to change the topic question, but it is more for Mr. Branscombe because I'm sure he will know the answer um, more than anyone else. How many weeks has Mr. Hicks not been hosting the welfare evening this, thus far this year? Explain to her why, though. He has been on vacation for um, two of the sessions in July. Mm -hmm. And he has been away for the last one, which Pat Cole and I did. Yeah. But tell her why he's been away. He's, on, he's been on vacation. It's an emergency, oh, right? The, the, this, last one, the last, this last one was an okay. emergency, yes. Yeah. That has nothing to do with my question. Yeah. You and Pat Crowler have been together hosting those meetings, correct? This week? The three meetings that he has thus far been absent from. We, we have hosted. You have hosted. Yeah. Are the two of you getting paid the portion of his salary that he should be getting to those weeks? Or are you doing it on the goodness No, I'm, I'm doing it because the town administrator is also the deputy uh, welfare and deputy health officer okay. as part of my job description. Mm -hmm. So is Pat Crowell for which paid, I paid for? Out of the welfare line, out of the welfare salary line? She she's paid for the hour that or whatever it is that she Out of the welfare line or out of her salary line? Out of her salary line. So the money that Bob should be getting paid for the time that he is not there, Bob is still getting paid. And you and Paul and Pat are not. Well, that, that is correct. He's, he's paid when he's away, when he's as I am when I'm on vacation. Yes, I mean, paid vacation. Okay. Please feel free to elaborate, Sandy. Eli. No. Bob Hicks, the welfare officer. I don't hear. Gets a stipend, correct? And That's it's correct. not a salary. That's it is correct. a stipend. But as long as he every does hour for whatever time period he is there for a year. He gets a stipend. Right. So it's not a salary issue. Right. With him. And as long as he does not go over that, he's fine. He can go over it. So I just want to clarify. So if he's gone all 52 weeks of the year, he still gets that money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Paul and Pat are there instead? Well, I don't think he'd be out 52 uh, weeks of no. the year. Let's, let's go for hypothetical. If he's out all 52 weeks, I can't answer paid. that because I don't know. I yes. think it would probably be a decision of the board that if he was out 52 weeks, no, he would probably not get that money. <laughs> he was out 52 weeks for the year. He would, he would, the following year, he would be no longer a health officer. Well, sir. And if he was out 52 weeks, he wouldn't be getting that money. Because he has to put in that time to get that money. No, he doesn't. It's a stipend for the, for the time he puts in. Sandra? Uh, I believe Eli is right, because he does get a stipend. I mean, that's not, um, that's not a weekly pay. That's no, it's not. not. Time, so no, it's not. He doesn't, um, but he has multiple hats as well. That's he, right. He's also the um, code enforcement. Building inspector. Building inspector. I mean, he, and he gets paid a stipend for all of these yes, jobs, he does. as well as health officer. And these are a lot of um, stipends, and these are a lot of nights that he's missing, a lot of days that he's not here. Well, I'm not sure that there's a lot of days that he's missing. If you figure it for a whole year, I wouldn't consider that. I mean, most people, when they have a job, they aren't allowed to take vacation. May I just clarify something? Um, so he does. He gets paid for as welfare officer and building inspector. There's no. There's no line for code enforcement. Code enforcement goes along with building, building inspector. inspector. Just, thank to, you. just to clarify. That. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Did you include health officer time? Code code enforcement. Well, excuse me. The, the, what my major thing was that there's no separate salary for code enforcement. That is building inspector code enforcement. Right. Yeah. But just welfare officer. Welfare and health. Yeah. And it doesn't amount to a lot. But. Okay. 
Yes, those three things. Yeah. Any other comments or concerns? Can I make a motion to adjourn? At what time? Um, um, I mean, no, we're, going to we're going to adjourn first. We can't adjourn. We just have to make a motion to adjourn to non-public. Excuse me. Can I have it? We're making a motion to adjourn to non-public at that time. I make a motion to adjourn to non-public. Well, what I so on RSA 91A3 to section C. Which states? Matter discussed would likely affect the that of that person, any person other than a member of the board, unless such person requests an open meeting. The exemption shall extend to include any application for assistance, or tax abatement, or waiver of a fee, fine, or other levy, if based on the ability to pay for the quality of the applicant. Well, okay, John. Confident. For a second? Yes. Second. Does she know about the ladies? Want to read this? Okay. Oh,